Hello everyone, it's Foo here, and apparently people have been letting me cook because crab is on the menu tonight. I love cloth, I will not hear a bad word said about its design, and I think it has the best shiny of Generation 9. And for those reasons, I wanted to create a team around cloth that allowed cloth to do some serious sweeping. Unfortunately, its stats aren't particularly inspiring on that front. It's got a usable attack stat, but it's not the highest. It's got a decent defense stat. Its HP isn't too high and it's very frail on the special side. And its speed stat is kind of too quick for Trick Room, but too slow for actually sweeping. But fortunately, it does have a new signature ability in Anger Shell. This gives it a plus one attack, special attack and speed when its HP drops below half. Unfortunately, that also comes with the downside of dropping its defense and special defense by one stage two, which I kind of think is unnecessary for a Pokemon with such mediocre stats. Like when you're below half health, you're very frail anyway, and dropping the defenses at that point means it will just get taken out by anything. But we take what we're given and we'll have to make do with this for cloth sweeps. The only issue is at plus one attack, cloth still isn't gonna be one hit KOing a lot of Pokemon. And at plus one speed, it's still not gonna be outspeeding everything. You'll still need speed control on the team. But where there's a will, there's a way. And oh boy, do I have a fun team to show you. I'll take you through some battles and then discuss the team rental at the end of the video. If you do enjoy these videos about more overlooked Pokemon, then consider leaving a like and subscribing for more content. So in this first battle that I want to show you, we're up against a team featuring Gengar, which is pretty cool. They've obviously got Tailwind themselves, and my strategy also features Tailwind to make sure that Cloth can outspeed stuff, so I'll need to match that if possible. They also have a lot of priority, and I have Armor Tail for Ridgeraff that can help protect against that and also a lot of spread moves in Hyper Voice Sylveon, Make It Rain, Gordengo. So I want to bring Harry Armor for Wide Guard. And that also gives me like a Trick Room component in the back as well. So that's what I'm gonna go with. But the most common lead for this team is gonna be Salamence and Claudia the Cloth. So we don't get to see trainer cards for this battle. It's a weird glitch that's going on, really don't understand it. But my opponent is going to lead with Talonflame and Gengar, two very fast Pokemon with the Talonflame having the Tailwind option there. So I usually like to set up Tailwind with my Salamence, but on this first turn, since I still won't outspeed the opponent with the Tailwind up, I decide just to go for the activation straight away and you will see what happens here. So I have Earthquake on my Salamence and fortunately Salamence survives the Sludge Bomb. It's actually not really particularly close. So I get the Earthquake off and it does a ton of damage to Gengar, knocks it out in one. This is an uninvest, unattack. It's not invested in its attack stat at all. It's life orb, but it's not invested in attack. So I was surprised it took out Gengar, but obviously it also activates my Cloth's weakness policy, which is absolutely fantastic. We get the cursed body, but that's fine because Cloth is now activated and you can see that Anger Shell now activates as well. So we've got plus two attack from the weakness policy. We get another plus one from the Anger Shell and we get the speed boost as well. Not that I'll be outspeeding the opponent at the moment because they've got Tailwind and I don't. We get the defense drops, which isn't ideal, but it's Cloth's turn to attack now. It's waited for all of those animations to go off and it can just one hit KO the Talonflame as well. I was kind of surprised that both of these Pokemon didn't have the Focus Sash. I guess Gengar might have been Choice Scarf and maybe the Talonflame was Covert Cloak or something like that. Not really sure, but very good that we can just clear the opponent's two Pokemon first turn. Absolutely amazing. We don't have Tailwind though, and that's what I want to try to set up next, because at plus one speed, Cloth will actually outspeed Meow Scarada if I get my own Tailwind up. So what I'm going to do here is, I think that I'll have to defensive Terror with my Salamence. I'm Steel Terror, and I'm hoping that that will allow me to take a Hyper Voice from the Sylveon, and then I can, you know, get the Tailwind. While they have Tailwind, Sylveon may well out outspeed. I'm guessing that the Meow Scarada is going to attack into the Cloth because obviously Cloth is the biggest threat right now. Cloth is just terrifying. The ambush Pokemon living up to its name with this surprise strategy. And so I'm hoping that my Protect with Cloth will mean that Meow Scarada doesn't get any damage off this turn. So you can see my defensive Steel Terror with Salamence, it's just very nice typing for Salamence, which is great. And the flower trick does come out and goes into the cloth and I can protect to mitigate that. 
So I now go for the Tailwind. Salamence actually moves before Sylveon, so it's not really a speed invested Sylveon. So the Terror wasn't really necessary. As long as Salamence got the Tailwind up, I didn't really need it to survive the turn. Um, but it's fine. It's still here. It didn't take any damage at all from that Hyper Voice. And the Sylveon gets its Throat Spray off, so it will be doing a, quite a bit of damage now. But this turn, I need to find a play because I really need to get damage into the Sylveon. This team doesn't have great damage into fairy types and Sylveon is very specially bulky. So I need to do some physical damage into it and Clawth is really my best option there. The issue is that Meowth Rider does have priority moves. So I eventually find the play, switch into Farid Giraffe because that has the Armor Tail ability, which prevents either of your Pokemon from being affected by priority moves. And that means that because Clawth at plus one speed will outspeed the Meowth I can definitely get an attack off. As I went for Rock Slide though, and that can miss. So when I say definitely, there's a bit of luck involved. But you can see the opponent doesn't predict the Armor Tail. They actually protect the Sylveon, which is really great because it means that it won't be getting any attack off this turn. And I can go for the Rock Slide to do massive damage to the Meowth I get a crit but I don't really think it mattered because I'm at plus three attack, so doing massive, massive damage. Now I know that with the Tailwind, my, my Feridgeraf has a good chance of outspeeding the Sylveon, considering how slow it was. It wasn't able to outspeed a Salamence under Tailwind, whereas Feridgeraf, I think, should be able to do that at least. So I should be able to outspeed the Sylveon. And again, the Meowth can't go for priority into Clawth, and we know that Clawth outspeeds it, so I should be pretty safe going for the Rock Slide here. Fortunately, connecting on both Pokemon, so Meowth Skorada is knocked out, and I get that really crucial damage on Sylveon, because that could have been a real issue if I have missed that Rock Slide, but that was not the case. I get the Hyper Voice off. Unfortunately, it doesn't KO the Sylveon. Clawth does go down, but I've still got two Pokemon in the back. My Salamence is still there. Not that Salamence can hit Sylveon particularly well. I've got the Earthquake. That probably would do it, to be fair. But then I've also got Hariyama, which has Wide Guard, it has Fake Out, so it's looking pretty good here. I bring in my Hariyama, my opponent doesn't really have any more plays, and they cancel the battle there. So I thought that was a pretty nice battle just to demonstrate the activation of Clawth. Clawth becomes a KO machine with this setup. It's got just enough speed investment to outspeed Meowskarada when it gets its plus one speed. It's got as much attack as it can have outside of that, and just a little bit of bulk. And the Salamence is the main way to activate it, because with Earthquake you activate Weakness Policy and you activate Anger Shell. It does just enough damage to put you in that anger shell range so that you can start doing a lot of damage and also get the, the important speed boost. What's nice about Earthquake as well is that it can't be redirected, so you will always hit the claw. I'll show you another battle with this part of the strategy, and it's up against a very scary team. This team is the team that won the San Diego Regionals recently, featuring a very interesting Terra Poison Garganacle and some other Pokemon that are rising in usage at the moment. So things like Paladin Tauros and Baxcalibur. Baxcalibur is not too scary because of the cloth, but that Paldean Tauros has Intimidate, which can be very annoying, and also both of its stabs hit Claw for super effective damage. So that's something that I have to worry about. But Salamence actually has a good matchup into the Tauros, so I decide to go with the same lead and see how far this strategy can take me. So apparently this time we're allowed to see the trainer cards, and my opponent is just lost in a cave somewhere, which is very interesting. They are going to lead with Paldean Tauros and Goldengo. Not so great to see the Tauros on lead because it does have Intimidate, and that means that Clawth's attack stat will be dropped, which is not good to see. It also means that Salamence's attack stat will be dropped, which is not ideal either because the Earthquake might not take my Clawth into Anger Shell range. Salamence's Intimidate goes first, indicating that Salamence is probably quicker than the opposing Tauros. I am max speed, so hopefully I can get the Tailwind off before the Tauros attacks. This first turn I am going to go for Tailwind and keep my Cloth protected because I don't have the damage output into the Goldengo yet and I'm scared about Cloth taking a Make It Rain or anything from the Tauros as well. So I get the Tailwind off before anything else moves, which is great. The Goldengo goes for a Power Gem which I didn't really see coming, but it doesn't take out my Salamence, which is really, really great. It does a ton of damage, but I do avoid the KO. That's actually a choice spec Skuldengo, so it did do a lot of damage. I'm able to avoid any damage from the Tauros 
with the protect from my cloth. Now I really need to get cloth activated. If I can activate the weakness policy, I think that I should be able to take out the Goldengo. So I'm just going to go for the Earthquake and go for the Goldengo. If I don't get in the Angus Shell range, it's not the worst thing. As long as Goldengo goes down, that's really good. The opponent actually switches Goldengo out, but they have Garganackle in the back, and that does still take super effective damage from both the Earthquake and the high horsepower. The Aqua Jet comes out from the Tauros, which doesn't take Salamence out, and I mean, I wouldn't have expected it to, but it does put it in Life Orb range. So that was kind of not a wasted move. We get the Earthquake off and it actually crits Cloth, but that's a good thing because it makes sure that I go into Anger Shell range. Without that crit, because of the attack drop, I might not have got into Anger Shell range, but that actually just ensured that I get both the weakness policy and the plus one from Anger Shell. So I can be doing a ton of damage. Now you can see that with the Anger Shell boost and after the Earthquake damage, I will be able to do a pretty decent amount into the Garganackle. Salamence does go down to Life Orb, as I said, but we can get the high horsepower off, we connect, almost take the Garganackle off. If we didn't have the Intimidate at the beginning of the match, that would have been an, a KO on the Garganackle. Uh, but we're in an okay position here. This is not too bad. We can send in our Ferrigerac now. I've got the Armor Tail, so I can protect my Cloth from any stray Aqua Jets. And in this position, I was considering going for a Hyper Voice, um, but actually that's not the play because Garganackle can go for Wide Guard and Psychic really covers for a lot of things. If Garganackle wants to Terror, it's super effective, but it should take out Garganackle anyway. And I actually have Terror Blast on my Cloth, which I think my opponent thought their Tauros would be very safe. It's a very defensive Tauros and even at plus two, most coverage moves that Cloth could run wouldn't be able to take out a Tauros. But Terra Flying is so good on Cloth because defensively you resist grass and fighting and offensively you can take out the fighting types and grass types very nicely. You're also immune to ground type moves. So all of these things are great. Um, I wasn't sure if Terra Blast would actually take out the Tauros at plus two, but fortunately it does because that is a very bulky Tauros. But we're able to take it out, which is really, really great. Cloth claiming another one, just putting in all sorts of work. It's so cool. I love this Pokemon. It's so beautiful with the shiny. Viridgeraf doing really, really great work as well, protecting it from any Aqua Jets and taking down the Garganackle. While we have that Tailwind up, there's no need to consider going for Trick Room or anything like that. Goldengo now comes back in and Meowscarada. We already know that we outspeed Meowscarada at plus one from the Anger Shell. So this isn't an awful position at all. Now, I wasn't sure which one of these to target with my Cloth. I know my Tailwind is running out at the end of the turn. So I'm going to go for Trick Room because then um, my Harry Armor in the back and my Ferrigerath will be in a good position to outspeed these two remaining Pokemon under Trick Room. Um, but yeah, I decided to go for a high horsepower into Goldengo rather than a Terra Blast into Meowscarada because Meowscarada can be Focus Sash, and if I don't take it out, then they'll get an attack off with both Pokemon. Whereas if I can take the Goldengo out, I only have to worry about the Meowscarada. Luckily, they go for a Sucker Punch, forgetting about Armor Tail, and that puts me in a really good position. I mean, if they had attacked into Cloth with Flower Trick, for example, I still would have been in a good position. In fact, I might have been in a better position because then I'd have had my two Trick Room Pokemon in when after I'd set up Trick Room. Uh, but Cloth actually survives the turn and it will be slower than Meowscarada in Trick Room, but I can get the damage off with my Ferrigerath. So I'm in a really commanding position at the end of this battle. Um, I've still got Harry Armor, which has a very good matchup into the Meowscarada, and I should be able to take this home. But Cloth is not looking in a great position here. So I get the Hyper Voice off with Ferrigerath. It does a lot of damage. It does over half, which is really nice. Um, so the special attack investment is just right to make sure that we can two hit Kyo uh, Meowscarada. I guess when it's single target though. Um, so that helped with the damage output. I can now bring in Hariyama. We're under Trick Room and Meowscarada has way too many turns to burn with Protects. I mean, they could try to go for like a triple Protect. And even then, I think that they'd be struggling because they'd have to take out both of my Pokemon and they don't have any spread moves. So they go for a protect here, uh, just to protect on the fake out turn, I guess. And uh, I go for the fake out and hyper voice 
Um, it, it didn't really matter on that one. I still have the armor tail to protect me from sucker punches. Hyper voice goes first, and so it's for a giraffe that actually gets the last KO. So that one was another one just showing the strategy and actually putting it into practice against a very, very legitimate team. I know that it's not piloted by Jin Suk, the person who won San Diego Regionals, but still it's a very strong team with proven results and it's just nice to see that this, which is a more gimmicky team, can still hold its own against these very strong and well put together teams. So now just to briefly go over the team before I take you through some of the different modes, we have the Salamence and the Clawth combo. That's the one that you've seen the most at the moment. Clawth is there to be the sweeper. You need the weakness policy activation to get the damage output so that it can actually get some really good KOs and spread damage nicely with Rock Slide. And the Anger Shell is also really important because at plus one speed, it outspeeds pretty much everything. Although you do need to make sure that you have Tailwind support because opposing Tailwind is very common. To activate Clawth, I mainly use Salamence, which is actually a special attacker. It does tons of damage with Draco Meteor. It's not got any attack investment, but it has the Life Orb. With zero attack EVs, but Life Orb, you actually take Clawth down to just under half health, which is the perfect range to put it in Anger Shell range. And if you crit, you don't knock out your Clawth. That's really important. So it's just the perfect combo. You've seen Clawth with the Terra Flying, which is good defensively and offensively. And you've seen Terra Steel on the Salamence, which is a defensive typing, which is really helpful. The alternative setup mode is with Luminion. Luminion also has Tailwind and it can activate Clawth with Surf activating the weakness policy and anger shell again, just. I wanted to use Luminion on this team because it really doesn't have many niches and having that weak enough surf to put Clawth in that perfect range was one of them, as well as having Tailwind to help with that speed control and Storm Drain to keep water moves away from Claw. So all of those factors actually make Luminion kind of viable on this team. For such a weak Pokemon, I really had to try it out. The only issue with Luminion is it's kind of passive. It can only really help in hand outside of that. But it does have certain good matchups, for example, into rain teams because Storm Drain really comes into effect and also against Dondozo, it can be very helpful to have a Storm Drain Pokemon there. Covert Cloak is also helpful into Fake Out users or Rock Slide Spam. It's a little bit more reliable than Salamence. You also saw me use Ferrigiraffe and Hariyama. So Ferrigiraffe's armor tail is so important. Clawth is super frail when it's below half health, but if you have that Anger Shell activation and get Tailwind up, nothing will outspeed, so armor tail really comes into its own. Hyper Voice and Psychic are just nice for damage. Hyper Voice, especially with the spread, is great, and it's Terra Normal to do more damage with that Hyper Voice. But it also means that for a Giraffe can be a Trick Room option for late game when Clawth has spread that damage around, you can then Trick Room and clean up with the Trick Room elements on the team. And Safety Goggles is really important. It means that for a Giraffe is really a complete counter to Amoongus, and you can't be put to sleep before you get your Trick Room up or anything like that. So really, really great. Hariyama's there, just a good Trick Room attacker. Fake Out support for Clawth is helpful. Wide God support for Clawth is helpful. And then other than that, Close Combat and Knock Off are very, very powerful moves to use. And again, Flame Orb helps your matchup against Amoongus, you can't be put to sleep. The last Pokemon here is Arboliva. I needed something that could do damage into Dondozo and this thing with this spread kind of does that relatively well because Energy Ball obviously is the main way to hit it. I had the smart idea to pair it with Absorb Bulb because then if you can self-surf with Luminion, you get the Absorb Bulb activation giving you plus one special attack and Seed Sower activates so you get Grassy Terrain, meaning your Energy Ball will do a ton of damage. But actually in practice, I haven't used this combination so much. But if you do go up against Dondozo, having the Energy Ball is super important. And if they decide to Terrastalize into a Dragon type, you have Dazzling Gleam, or a Steel type, you have Earth Power. So that's very helpful in those circumstances. It's just generally a good Trick Room attacker. So that's the team but I do just want to show off the other mode because you can't always rely on the cloth mode, especially into things like rain. Cloth does not do well into rain. So to put into practice what I was just talking about with the other mode, this battle is against a trick room team slash rain team with a palafin, but also with a strong trick room component. Cloth won't do particularly well into it because it doesn't really like the rain matchup and also the Trick Room matchup isn't fantastic either. 
The game has allowed us to see trainer cards for this battle too, how benevolent, and my opponent does have a cool little cat theme going on. But anyways, they are going to lead with their Palafin and Amoongus, which is actually a pretty good lead for me because I have my Feridgeraf and Luminion. Feridgeraf doesn't fear anything from Amoongus because I have the safety goggles and Luminion has the Storm Drain, so Palafin can't really be doing anything into this either. I want to protect with my Luminion because it is slightly vulnerable to a Spore, although I'm guessing that the Amoongus will go for a Spore into Feridgeraf instead. I could have actually just gone for like a Helping Hand Psychic into the Amoongus, but I wasn't sure that it would KO and actually I wanted to prioritize my Trick Room because they obviously brought Palafin, they've probably brought Pelipper, so they've probably got, you know, some faster Pokemon in there. They actually bring in their King Gambit, which is scary for my Feridgeraf. Feridgeraf doesn't have any damage into King Gambit and I was a little bit concerned that I didn't have good damage into it full stop. But I do have my Arboliver Ar Ar and I also have Hariyama, so I just need to get one of those in and then I can start doing better damage. I feel like sw swapping in Arboliver for Luminion is the best here because I'm predicting a Spore into the that slot this turn and I just want to protect with my Feridgeraf um, so that I can get better positioning because once Arboliver's on the field, I feel like I can maybe start getting damage onto the King Gambit. And Fortunately, you can see here that Amoongus is very passive. It really can't do much to my team. This next turn, so they go for the Kowtow Cleave into the Protecting for a Giraffe, which I predicted. And this next turn, I want to get damage onto that King Gambit, as I said. So I can go for an Earth Power and switch into my Hariyama, predicting another Kowtow Cleave into that slot. Maybe the opponent will switch up moves. Hariyama should be able to take some anything that they go for, unless it's like, Terra Blast when they Terra Flying with the King Gambit, but I didn't really predict that. And if they're going to go for that play, it's much more likely that the Terra Blast would go into the Arbor Liver. Um, but we see that they're probably not going to be Terra-ing this turn, as they actually go for Protect with Amoongus, um, maybe wanting to Protect for an incoming Psychic while they get the King Gambit's Kowtow Cleave off. I do predict it, predict it correctly and Hariyama can resist that Kowtow Cleave while I get my Flame Orb. So that's really nice because now Amoongus doesn't have the opportunity to sport Hariyama as I've already got the Flame Orb active. So now I'm thinking that they're probably going to switch King Gambit out. We've seen Palafin, which means I think they've probably brought their Pelipper, which would be immune to the Earth power. So I'm going to predict Pelipper switching in. I'm going to go for an Energy Ball into the King Gambit slot, and I'm also going to switch back into Feridgeraf just to get really, really strong positioning. Because obviously close combat wouldn't really be doing too much into Pelipper anyway. And also Trick Room will be running out soon. So if I have Feridgeraf in, I'll be in a good position to set it up again. The Amoongus here goes for a Pollen Path, which does a really nice amount to our Bolivar, but it also sets up my Grassy Terrain because of Seed Sower, the ability, which means that this Energy Ball does a ton to Pelipper. It does so much damage. Unfortunately, that wasn't a Focus Ash. I don't know if the Pelipper is Focus Ash, but I didn't quite bring it down to 1 HP, but it does so much damage. So Pelipper is going to go down to whatever now, really. It's, it will drop to anything. And I'm going to go for a Hyper Voice with my Feridgeraf because just in case they want to switch something in on that Pelipper slot, I can maybe try to catch it. If King Gambit wants to come back in, then I'll get like a nice powerful hit into that. Here, Amoongus goes for a Pollen Puff again. We see it do 66 damage, so that's important to note. I can take the Pelipper out with another Energy Ball and I go for the Hyper Voice here. And I'm, this is kind of an interesting play. I could have gone for a Psychic there, but this doesn't reveal to my opponent that I have the Psychic, so they may feel quite safe right now. But obviously I can go for the Psychic into Amoongus at some point. So the opponent's going to bring back in their Palafin since the, tw the Twisted Dimensions return to normal, so we don't have Trick Room anymore. And uh, I really want to set up the Trick Room. So what I'm going to do here is switch into Luminion. I'm thinking that they might go for a Wave Crash into the Feridgeraf to prevent Trick Room again and I will, uh, I'll guess in my Luminion. Trick Room is really, really just 
for my Arbor Liver to be slower than King Gambit and get those attacks up. And also to make sure that my whole, whole team outspeeds the, the Palafin. They actually opt to go for close combat though, which was a good play because that would have taken out my Arbor Liver, but it also covered for Luminion switching in. It's definitely a 100% like adamant choice band because otherwise Luminion would not have fainted there. So that is a very, very powerful Palafin. Um, but they, they, because they opted to target that slot, I actually managed to get the Trick Room off here. So that's really nice. I didn't predict the close combat. If they'd gone for the close combat into Farid Giraffe, I probably would have been in a slightly worse position. But fortunately, that wasn't the case. So now I can bring back in our Bolivar, which they obviously see as the biggest threat. I mean, it would like one hit KO Palafin in the in the grassy terrain. So I can understand why they're targeting it. So here I can go for another energy ball into the Palafin. I'm thinking that even if they withdraw in the grassy terrain, my energy ball is going to be doing a lot of damage to King Gambit. And I want to go for a Psychic into Amoongus because I really need to get some damage into that. So another Pollen Puff comes out here and I think at that time it did 68. So it's been doing quite a lot of damage, varying between 66 and 68. I get a crit with my energy ball, which does tons of damage and I'm able to get the Psychic into the Amoongus. It doesn't quite take it out though, um, which is kind of annoying. I get the special defense drop, but at such low HP, probably isn't going to come into play. So here I have to be careful because obviously King Gambit is a bit of a threat. I'm not sure if Earth Power will KO King Gambit. I am gonna go for it, but I'm just not confident that it will. So I want to protect with my Farid Giraffe. It will give me a bit more grassy terrain recovery too, um, because at this stage, Amoongus can also take out my Farid Giraffe. Farid Giraffe is threatened by both of them. It's really interesting to see how the uh, Pollen Puff is a really powerful offensive tool for them. And it's hard to know where they're gonna be targeting it, because it could go into either of my Pokemon or King Gambit. And I'm thinking that maybe they will want to take out my Farid Giraffe with the Pollen Puff. So I'm going to protect that or they're going to Pollen Puff and then Kowtar Cleave. What I didn't see coming was that they went for the Pollen Puff into my Arbor Liver, which they really, really want to KO because if it's still around and they have their Palafin, then I'll be able to take out Palafin. Uh, but I'm able to take out the King Gambit with the Earth Power, which is great. I guess that they're a little bit concerned about predictions and they don't want to switch in King Gambit at, at, in Palafin at any point um, because I predicted their switch into Pelipper early. So that's put me in, in kind of a good position there. Unfortunately, Grassy Terrain does wear off. My Farid Giraffe is at 68 HP. We've seen that Pollen Puff ranges between 66 and 68. So it looks like they need a high roll to be able to take out my Farid Giraffe with a Pollen Puff. And that's why this turn I just double because I'm not sure if my Energy Ball will KO the Palafin. I'm protected by jet, from Jet Punch by Armor Tail at the moment. And so I really need to get attacks into Palafin while Trick Room's still up, knowing that it's Choice Band and it can't protect. That's really important. So they go for the Terra Water this turn. And I guess what they could have tried to do is go for a Pollen Puff into Farid Giraffe to try to take it out. They actually go for a Protect with Amoongus. I'm thinking that they were baiting one of my Protects. I'm thinking that they might have won uh, expected either my Arboliver or Farid Giraffe to protect this turn. Um, and so that they could, you know, protect with Amoongus and get an, a KO with their Palafin. But that wasn't the case. I was just going straight for the attacks. I still had my... Hariyama in the back, which could fake out. And so that was a reasonable position for me to be in. Um, I made a slightly risky play because if they had Pollen Puffed into Farid Giraffe and taken it out, um, then I, I maybe could have still lost. Uh, we will never know because they do the Pollen Puff the next turn and it crits. So we won't know what kind of a role they might have got if they went for it the previous turn. Uh, but at that point, it was a little bit too late for the opponent and I can take out the Amoongus with an Earth Power. So that is the other mode to the team. And I really, really wanted to show it off because if you do want to try this team, be aware that Clawf is not the only way. You can't win all your battles by picking the Clawf mode, even though that is obviously the reason behind the team and it's very, very fun. 
the trick room component is very important to consider. So that's the team. It is more of a meme team, it's not so consistent. Cloth is not the most viable Pokemon, so trying to get it to work is tricky, but it can work with this team, and oh boy, is it satisfying when it does. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more content. All that's left to be said is I've been Fu, you've been awesome, and hopefully, see you next time. Goodbye.